right. Yeah, all right, on all the right. 15th. So oh, I yeah, a, I forgot we're not recording yet. I got a few more things that we can talk okay. about. So if, you, if you're ready to uh, start, because we're eight minutes in now, so let's go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> Let's go ahead and get ourselves a little, little podcast going here. Yep. Are we going to play anything? What were you talking about? Um, I've got all my articles on uh, my computer, so. Probably not then. Yeah. Probably something halfway through if we, like, can't all right, figure all right, out all right. to talk about. <laughs> so, I, I think we have plenty to talk about this week. Plenty of things for us to uh, kind mm-hmm. of go in on. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, it, there's been a few things that have happened since we last recorded yeah uh there's some nintendo news too oh is there yeah that's always nice to hear nintendo news uh all right so before we get too deep in anything hi guys mm-hmm. i'm joe hey i'm luke and it's we are the Un- geeks. yeah i'm gotta geeks hey. <laughs> we get together every week and we talk about dumb shit um sometimes we go in on that dumb shit and before we start talking about uh anything else yeah. I got to touch on a completely tone deaf thing that Verizon Wireless did during the Super Bowl. Oh, um, God. Those yeah. motherfuckers. Where they, they dropped their little Super Bowl ad honoring, like, you know, firefighters and shit like that. While <sighs> just last year, what, five or six months ago, when they uh, slowed down a fire department's internet services in California while they were co- um, coordinating fighting a giant. The uh, Mendocino Complex Fire, I believe it is. Yeah, the Big Fuck Fire. 410,000 acres burned um, during that. And Verizon throttled their service. And there was such a stupid hoopla around that because there's supposed to be an exemption to emergency services not being not having their data throttled on their plan during, during major events like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Verizon didn't lift those data restrictions until the uh until the fire department paid for uh an unlimited upgraded plan pardon me it's just insane yeah no it's it's absolutely stupid and it's like how how fucking fucking uh greedy shit-headed asshole do you have to be to even do that in the first place even yeah, after my- it was. They were called in multiple times, saying, "Hey, we're fighting the fire. Can you lift this? Can you do this? We need this. We need this lifted. We need this to keep yeah. going." And, and then twice, I'm sure they heard, "Okay, uh, let me send this to my supervisor. You will get an email in two to four business days, and we will see what we can do." Okay, is there anything I can help you with? Anything else I can help you with for Verizon Wireless? Jesus, and it's so stupid because over eleven billion dollars of of loss. Uh, insured losses were reported. In fact, uh, I got my timeline a little bit mixed up. It was back in November. November, yeah. November. Uh, I still remember when this news broke. Uh, in my head, I was thinking, how... So, I, normally, I think when I think of uh, being throttled, I don't think of them notifying you that they're throttling you. Um, since that was Verizon's big thing in the past, was they would just do it. And you wouldn't know. It's just your internet's going slower and slower. But I'm guessing they must have fucking notified this fire department like, hey, oh, we see you're busy uh, trying to fight a fire here, but uh, you're going to have to pay us some more money. Like, it's fucking ridiculous in either case. First responders of California answer the call. The ending text of the commercial read, our job is to make sure they can get it. Yes. Sure, as long as they pay for it. Um, I, I, I can't. The, they must really, really believe in that idea that everything forgets the news cycle quickly so that no one would remember this. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. It's why I love the Internet. The Internet doesn't forget. It's, oh, no. it's always there. What you we, post is here. We do not what you forget. say, it's here. Um, actually, I, I'm going to have to reissue another correction. I was correct on the timeline. It was mm-hmm. until November that the damage was reported. So yeah, it's yeah. it's nuts. Like eleven point four billion dollars worth of damage and in insured claims and stuff were reported in November from the Mendocino complex and the car fires, as well as the camp fires and the Woolsey fires later on. So it's like, yeah, you, know, you guys don't need data. If you need, you want data? Here's what you do: give us some more money. But but we're trying to make sure everything doesn't burn down. 
Oh, well. Corporations do not care about people. Yep, they nope. only care about uh, money. They only care about their bottom line. So. Yep. Never confuse. Uh, so, yeah, you they know. they do something helpful to so caring was, about you. That was a very uh, sobering open to the podcast, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I, it's... <laughs> it's just god it's it's frustrating isn't it yeah oh yeah the super bowl in general i uh i didn't watch it because i don't fucking care i was i but... was either sleeping during it or uh, uh cleaning my apartment i don't i don't know yeah i i know when i woke up to go to work i looked um and my grandmother i guess had been watching it i looked at the tv for like two minutes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they had uh, it was fourth quarter Still 14 minutes left, so just relatively just started. And um, the score was still 3-3. Three to three. And I was like, wow. Even the announcers sound fucking bored at this point. I mean, yeah, apparently this was the <laughs> lowest scoring uh, Super Bowl in history. 13-3 to three was what it was oh won. God, it was, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I that just must have, unless there was some amazing defensive plays throughout that game that must have been the most boring shit <laughs> i can't comment on any of it because a you know neither team yeah. was that was in it rams and the patriots i don't give a shit about either team and you know b i don't watch football anyway i'm not even gonna front i don't yeah. i don't so i, I probably uh, would have watched it if one of you know i'm stubborn i continue to support the Bengals even though they've sucked the last 10 years but Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if they make it. I'll watch it then. Hometown, whatever, right? Yeah, <laughs> watch it or at least like keep updated on it. Yeah, yeah. I only know the score because, of course, you know, uh, it popped up everywhere after everything ended and blah blah yeah. blah. And I'm on Twitter pretty much all the time, which Twitter is a great place for news. Um, it's also a great great place for shit posting and whatever, but. And outrage. It's really good for outrage. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. I, I just don't care. Yeah, like, I, I decided to check the score when I got to work just because of how absolutely funny it was to me. That it's just 3-3. Three to three, It just sounded so boring. And, like, literally the announcers, as the, the few minutes I watched of it, were like, and here we go. The pass is complete. Oh, that's his best pass of the night. This is great. And I'm like, oh my god, that was just a 10-yard fucking pass. <laughs> that, was, that was nothing. 10-yard <laughs> pass. I mean, oh, you know. Man. That's I was not... thinking, how bad have they been playing? I don't know if they've been playing badly or, or like you said, there's just been amazing defensive plays, but I don't know. Apparently not great. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, there's a lot of people angry about the halftime show, too. Um, there was that petition to get a uh, victory from spongebob right in the halftime show and the i guess the nfl whoever halftime plans at halftime said they were gonna do it or at least give a nod to it yeah there were which, i guess there were like there were like hints that it was gonna happen yeah you know? in their defense it sort of did they played like 20 or like 10 seconds five seconds of the clip from what i heard oh, even shorter yeah i yeah. watched it and i didn't really pay attention to exactly how long it was i was just like oh hey spongebob and then it turns into sicko mode or whatever i just the only reason i recognize the song is because it's in a bunch of fucking tiktok videos i and i didn't even i like i, I didn't terrible. pay any attention like all of my information is from secondhand outrage on reddit oh yeah. <laughs> And Which, like again, another great place for fucking outrage and the tisms. Like, like I completely understand though. Like, who the fuck wants to watch Maroon Five? Yeah, I don't. I mean, well, if Maroon Five had sang the song, I bet people would have been happy. You know, I I bet that whoever that have, rapper and, was, was, and that might have awful. <laughs> that and that might have lifted their mood, and that might have made Maroon Five tolerable, right? So. Yeah. Oh, wait, is Maroon 5 the ones who got famous for that YouTube video where they dance on treadmills? I have I don't no remember. idea. No oh, well, fucking it doesn't clue. Matter. <laughs> Whoever that was, that I, I, I have some respect for them because that was an amazing, amazing music, music video. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't I think that I can't was okay, you. go. Pro- maybe, Whatever, doesn't probably. matter. I, I don't know. 
I, I'm not a fan of Maroon 5, in case you can't tell. I, I think they're just kind of meh. Um, in, they're in that genre of, like, it's almost copy-paste, uh, up, upbeat pop songs that are going to... Like it's like upbeat hippie rock. Yeah. Um, it's it's guaranteed to get plays on yeah, radio pretty much like it it's made for the, the exact it, it it's basically following what a lot of people call accuse Nickelback of doing which yeah, is the, the formula yeah being very samely and formulaic yeah but you know like it's they 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 do the same thing you know it's like well there's most pop is that's like 99% of pop music you know it's, it's like all that, written uh, by the same people too the same yeah. ghostwriters it's like that uh that song from Bro Burnham called Repeat Stuff. It's like, yeah. that that is Maroon 5 in a nutshell. And I personally think they're worse than Nickelback. I'd rather listen to Nickelback than Maroon 5. Because, I mean, at least there are times where Nickelback has some sort of redemption because I think they generally have decent guitar play in some of their songs. Whereas Maroon 5, it's just the same, like, it's the same chord progression. It's the same everything. I, I, don't, I don't get how people hate on Nickelback, but then Maroon 5 is the exact same thing, but somehow worse, you know? I, yeah. I, I think with Nickelback, it's just much more obvious. Maybe. I don't know. It's like, the- if you, if honestly, like, real talk, mm-hmm. if you go from Nickelback's beginning to Nickelback's most recent work, at least it changes a little bit from album to album. Um, I mean, yeah, a lot of it is copy paste but they have some Nickelback. songs that are not like other songs whereas with maroon 5 it's like eh, eh, it's like the same upbeat nickelback was also much bigger and put themselves out as something very nickel like maroon 5 is just a pop band pop yeah. band yeah like they kind of a little rockish in there like they it, it, it they, touches, they are they are rock in nickelback the sense that is like they both we're, use we're guitars rock. we're we're a really you were really into rock and ro- no, you're not Nickelback. You're the fucking just cookie cutter music, cookie cutter songs, the most fucking basic shit. And I mean, that's coming from somebody who lived through the nineties when all of our music was the goddamn same. <laughs> I mean, I think it depended it came, on what... that's all the angst, the angst generation of music. Yeah. yeah. All of the, uh, the derivatives of Nirvana basically. Exactly. Yeah, because I mean, Nirvana started that post-grunge sort of thing yep. in the early '90s, and it carried on throughout a lot of it. And we got Pearl Jam out of that, and I hate Pearl Jam. <laughs> I used to like Pearl Jam, man, but the further, the more I listened to them, and, and like the more my music taste changed, the yeah. more I started hating them. Because what's his name, Eddie Vedder or whatever, who whoever the lead singer for that guy band is. Yeah. Just, Stop singing like you have a coke addiction and a dick in your mouth, man. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like he's gurgling a, a, a cock while trying to uh, find his next his next bump or something. I don't know. It's like um, the guy from Creed, it, it, like the singer from Creed, the dude from Pearl Jam. Uh, fucking one of the guys from Hanson. I remember Mad TV had this sketch. I think yeah. it was Mad TV, where they made fun of all those fucking like throat singing, whatever the fuck you want to call that style. Yeah, throat singing. <laughs> one, of, one of the best. It was uh, it was a fucking great sketch. That is very accurate. They are just like <sighs> where I they just know, they try and sound like it's not even trying to make their voice deeper. It's like they're trying to sound like they have a balloon in the back of their throat. Like I said, man, it sounds like they're swallowing a dick. Like that's yeah. Oh, they're trying to sing around it. <laughs> they're trying to sing around a dick that's deep down in their throat. Like man, like like someone, I don't know. Uh, what the fuck's the, the name of the porn star with the large dick in the world? John something or another. He just he just has it down there, and they're trying to sing through that. Like John Long Dick. I don't know. Yeah, he has the microphone in the dick, and they're just vibrating <laughs> their fucking vocal cords oh, oh. through the through the dick. Oh, it's like, come on, man, just just stop. I think we went way too deep into that joke. <laughs> Probably, yeah, but it was funny. Uh, one thing that's kind of neat. Uh, Microsoft is 
debuting a uh, new cross-platform development system with yeah. the goal of bringing Xbox Live support to more games on more systems. Oh, yeah. I saw a, a snippet that said they're going to bring Xbox Live to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, they want to bring it to Android, iOS, Switch, and, of course, PC and Xbox. Duh. But yeah. it's like, that's kind of neat. And with how open Nintendo's been to uh, cross-platform gaming, we've seen it, obviously, with stuff like uh, Minecraft and uh, what's the other game? Rocket League, a couple others. It's like, that sounds kind of mm. neat. And, I'm... um... I mean, there's a couple of multiplayer games on Xbox that I think I'd play with, like, if I could with other people. I've wanted that on PC for fucking years. Like, going all the way back to when they did the first uh, Windows Live, and they kind of connected it to Xbox Live, so they had the paid service stuff. I really wanted that because I wanted to be able to be at my PC and voice chat with somebody on the Xbox. Which you can't do that uh, now through the Xbox app, I believe. The yeah. Xbox app for Windows, you I believe you can do that now. But you still have to go through the Windows Store, which I don't want to do. <laughs> well, I mean, duh, they're gonna they're definitely trying to push that real hard. Exactly. And, uh, it's why I'm I'm kind of it's like, ooh, cool, they're finally oh, they're fun, kind of doing it because like like the gears I mean, of war hold, 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 hold up here let's 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 be honest Let, let's be fair here they're not kind of doing it they are completely 100 percent doing it you just have to go through a a, a method a, an app store um that might not be completely cool you know yeah like because i can I mean i completely understand like like i like that uh, windows 10 was given away the way it was so that they could gathers so much telemetry data on us the same way that google does except with google google uses most of the data that they collect from their handsets to do two things one make their services better for you and two aggregate it all into anonymized data and use it to serve us ads based on what we do on there they don't sell yeah. our data to other people but they put profiles together and then an advertiser will approach them and say hey i'm looking for you know, somebody that fits this demographic, and they might be 18 to 24 male gamers. And so Google will go, no problem, and they'll serve that ad to them. Whereas Microsoft, we don't know what the fuck they're doing with it. They're probably yeah. selling it. They're probably advertising it it's with us. when you start getting those shirts that say stuff like, uh, I'm about to level up and you look like just enough XP. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, for the gamers! That shit's so cringy. Like, uh, oh, God, really like, like, listen, man, I'm a huge gamer, and I have been since I was, like, five. I'm, I'm never going to not, not play video games, when, no matter what. When uh, did gamer become a fucking fandom? Yeah. A cringy-ass fucking fandom. I when hate did, that. Here, here's my question. I, it's like, a no, hobby. No, no. It's not a fandom. Here's Stop my it, question. People. Here's my question. When did it become a, a group of people that gets oppressed? What the... What? Again, yeah, the, that's like... It, when did we become what? our own no. race? You know, like, like, like when did gamers wrong. become like a people of a country that are being shit on by their neighbors? Like, when the fuck did that happen? I mean, that's that's even further down the rabbit hole. I don't even, like, that's so bad. It, but, it's but Luke, but Luke, gamers are the, the most oppressed minority on the, the planet. oppressed minority. Christian and, Republicans in college that are gamers. Anytime anybody says that, I want to beat them to within an inch of their life. And I yeah. want to say it within an inch of their life because I want them to be alive a little bit later to explain to me what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> why? Just, why? I mean, it's it doesn't even hurt. Like, I get going back to, oh, you're nerdy, you know, you're into video games, that sort of thing. Yeah. But it's not even that. It's worse. It's a thousand times worse. And the whole they're a group like no it's a fucking hobby yeah i'll hang out with other people who play video games but there's a whole shitload of people that play video games now it's not i it, mean yeah it's, it's a very like common a, thing i mean I, yeah. I, I, like bill maher not on this past week but the week before went in on the gamers and basically told every gamer to grow up and uh i kind of agree with him because we need to grow up we need to fucking do well, better and now when, when i say we i don't mean like us like the people who still hold down a nine to five job and don't break up with people over Fortnite, It's like, 
Yeah, we. You guys need to fucking clear. You know, you guys do. You fucking do. Like, well, again, that's literally. It's so many people now that I uh, like. Unless he's very specific with it, I don't know. I uh, Bill Maher. No, I'm he he totally saying, called out like the people who uh, like he, he cited a uh, like he basically said anyone who plays a video game needs to stop. Like, whatever. I'm going to ignore that part because you're a fucking uh, jackass. See, again, but, that's but, that's where I'm saying that's Bill Maher. Right. It's where like but, I but, don't. I used to respect Bill Maher, and it seems like more and more he's just decided he's just going to go in on anything he doesn't like, and I mean, without that, that's his right. Any we knowledge the same of it thing. whatsoever. But, well, I, I what I'm trying I mean, to get Bill at is he actually he I'm totally saying. is. But what I'm getting at is he brought up a good point, though, not like attacking gamers and stuff like that, but the point of like he he cited where a girl broke up with a guy because he played too much video games. Like, yeah, those people are, they need yeah. help. <laughs> they, they legitimately need help and they Ooh. do need to grow up. But yeah, sh- th- there's lots of people like that. There's also people that I've, I've known that play maybe two hours a day and have had somebody tell them, I'm going to break up with you. If you don't stop playing so many video games playing for so long. I mean, yeah, two hours a day. Those are rookie numbers. You know? Exactly. That's why it's like, okay, cool. Was he playing like 16 hours of Fortnite or anything like that? Uh, oh, though, uh, I, I do want to throw this out here, ladies. If you want to break up with your man because he plays nothing but Fortnite, that is a perfectly acceptable reason to not let <laughs> anybody shame you. Just fucking throw his ass out if if you yeah. guys live together, if you know, or you just leave. It's it's fine. If I if don't Bill play Moore Fortnite, so come on, somebody. He could have shit on the guy who fucking beat his wife on the live stream yeah. while he was trying to play video games. Yeah. That, okay, I get that. Yeah, shit on that guy. He's a piece of shit. But Bill Maher lately has just decided to go after, like, every subculture. He's doing it with comic book fans. Now, apparently, he's going after, and I'm using this in quotations, and I hate even fucking using it, gamers. It's like, oh, I know he was shitting on people that don't dress nice, like adults, in his opinion. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, he's always been an asshole. Yeah. Um, but more and more, I think Bill Maher's head is f- going further up his own asshole. Yeah, that, that, that's a problem that I've noticed because I watch the show regularly. I wouldn't say I watch yeah. it religiously, of course, because I'm not a religious person. But <laughs> I <do> watch <laughs> religiously, <it. laughs> but I do watch it really regularly because I I do enjoy a lot of his banter and a lot of his his guests are really cool and he's he can be very funny at times. Um. But it's like, like he, he seems to be, like you said, getting too far up his own ass because the people who are against Trump are the people he's now attacking, like the, the people that are more and more against Trump. And he's very much anti-Trump. So it's like, what are you doing right now? Because I was the say, people who like, are going to get Trump out are these people who play video games and who have trouble, and I put this in quotes, adulting. Like those are the people that want Trump out. Well, so you should probably be maybe yeah. allying with them. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that's in general the people that – and I don't even want to turn it into that kind of political thing. It kind of is. But he's the kind of person that before that election specifically was all about, no, we have to we'll start working together or this shit's not going to fly. And he was one of those people that called it, that said Trump could win and everyone you know, shat on him for that. I definitely give him credit for that. But now he's being that person that is just shitting on everybody and is giving more power to that, well, look at this fucking libtard yeah. argument of, yeah. well, why would we want to agree with this libtard? He's yeah. shitting on, you know, I like, I happen to like comic books and video games. Oh, so I'm a, a fucking piece of shit that has to grow up and has to do all the things you do? Fuck you. Another twenty uh, Trump 2020. Like, it's, yeah. it, he's... He's really being a fucking idiot. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know. It's why I, I stopped watching him uh, a while ago, even while I still was kind of enjoying it. And with this stuff lately, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to pick it back up. Yeah, he's just, he's just I, I took it all in, in good fun, but yeah, he, he's, he's... There's totally good fun. And he's a comedian, but he's not doing comedy... Like when a comedian does something and says something and is not saying it like to be racist or sexist or whatever, it's 
a joke. It's for fun. Bill Maher doesn't his this isn't joking. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, he's 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 That's going what, he's he's attacking these people that yeah. he should be allying with. But you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Oh, I love that the uh, he was he shit on comic books a general after Stanley died. Yeah, got called course. out for it. Yeah. Uh, then shit on comic books and Kevin Smith specifically because Kevin Smith, you know, tweeted and was like, "Come on, you know, we're all in this together." And shit on him all over for that again. It was like, "You're not saying bad things about Stanley, okay?" And did his whole thing. And then the uh, honors for Stanley just uh, last week that happened was fucking massive. Yeah, of and course. like a huge deal. Um, lots of not only celebrities, but like influential people chimed in, talked about, you know, how much hit comics meant to them and Stan Lee specifically. Yeah, it, it's and one of those things I, was, where, where Bill Maher, he, he's, he's, come, he's getting out of touch with the people who, uh, and I, he's, he's just out of touch, I think, now. It, I was, I was going to say the same thing. It's yeah. almost like. He, he is embodying the ideal of liberals that makes people not like liberals, of yeah. this wealthy, dist, uh, 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 unattached, just piece of shit. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what he's becoming. Like like, like I said, I, I still enjoy a lot of the things he says. I still am going to watch him, I think, at least a little bit longer to see where he goes with his... his I don't know the direction he's going in. See if he if he maybe comes back to a point where like okay he's not too bad. Um, yeah, and I'm not gonna cancel my HBO subscription because of him because I still love tons of shit on HBO. But still, it's oh like, yeah, no HBO's still great. I'm not gonna and I'm also not gonna say well HBO needs to reel him in. No, he can say whatever he wants and he can be an asshole and he can look like one, but you know whatever. Um, so let's move on from from that and uh, let's talk yeah. about. This uh, Metro Exodus controversy that's, that's kind of going around here. Um, um, real so. quick, because we talked about this before, and I want to throw it out there. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm just sitting here scrolling down Reddit, and apparently the NFL YouTube channel, and again, this might not be the actual reason, uh, they took down and re-uploaded the halftime show for yeah. Maroon 5 yeah. because of all the dislikes. And it's got uh, another 80, 90 plus thousand dislikes. 146 again. dislikes standing yeah. right now. <laughs> I I am one of those because I totally went and disliked it just because I don't like Maroon 5. Yeah, yeah. I, I dislike halftime shows. I mean, some of them have been okay. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's probably... I, I, I got to say there's not been one that has even remotely like reached me. As a non-football mm. fan, since the Janet Jackson revealed her uh, pasty in her titty, <laughs> yeah. and before that, I think I think Queen might have played one of the halftime shows when I was younger, and I remember that um, because I love Prince. Queen. A couple of years ago was good. Yeah, Prince. Prince is always good. Like yeah. you can always bet on Prince to I think be it was excellent. A year before he? No, maybe it was a few. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed Prince. Other right. than that, like yeah, yeah no, I, can't even I, I don't you. care about. Like we spend billions and billions of dollars on this every year, and nobody wants to go. Why are we? Why are we just putting the money towards this? Because you're all retarded. That's why. Yeah. Oh my God. Cities have to buy the stadiums and pay for the fucking all the shit in the stadiums, and yeah. the teams just they fucking okay. NFL just reaps all that money. All right. Let's stop soapboxing. Assholes. We we've done <laughs> enough of that this this time around. And so. let's. Soapbox about other things. Yeah, let's soapbox about other things. Because as long as it's, people are willing to listen to us, we're going to bitch about things. I um, mean, it just happens that uh, there's a lot of fucking shitty news. Yeah, all the time, isn't there? That's why we don't yeah. always report on the news or talk about recent events. We just go in on a topic or we play a yeah. video game while you guys watch and we just bullshit. So, um, but yeah, let's just talk about Metro Exodus. Uh, that is mm -hmm. the newest game, right? I don't know. I don't keep track of this. Yeah, um, and Metro Exodus is next one. So, you know, they, they sat there. It was advertised for a Steam release. Tons of people bought into pre-orders because the last two games were amazing. There's a lot of fans of this game. And of the, the game series, rather. And then uh, it was announced, what, week, two weeks ago, that um, 
Metro Exodus is not going to be on the Steam store. Instead, it's going to be on a timed exclusivity deal where you can only get it on the Epic Store until, what, 2020 or so. Um, and obviously that's pissed a lot of the customer base and a lot of the fan base off because why not? Why do I have to install another game installer? Why do I have to install another storefront? Because if you, if you count how many we have, we're up to like, what, 11 or so? I, I don't know. Uh, Blizzard and Bethesda and Origin and fucking Steam, of course. But Steam is the OG. Steam has been yeah. around the longest with Origin right behind them, which back then it was just called like EA Game Installer or something. You got Uplay. It's like, dude, come on. Like the only other one I have installed on my computer is uh, GOG, GOG Galaxy. Yeah. I have Steam and um, GOG Galaxy, and I won't add any more. It's oh, not to I'm say... I'm sorry, I do have the Blizzard installer installed, because uh, I do eventually want to play Destiny 2. Yeah. And I think I think we talked about the that part of this last week. Right. Specifically that they pulled it. So the new news is that uh, one of the developers from... Um, yeah, one of the it's one not, of the 4A games developers named 4A. Uh, that's it. No, it wasn't the no, Silver. No, no. It wasn't Deep Silver. Deep Silver is their publisher. Yeah. 4A Games is the developer, and one of the, the one of the dev team who goes by Cynet on uh, Russian game forums uh, sat there and, and made an announcement that uh, boiled down to if there's going to be a boycott, we're not going to make the game for PC anymore. If there's going to be any more games, yeah, basically, and I mean it, that's shitty enough. Um, in the whole write-up he did, he basically was blaming all of the hate for the exclusivity to um, uh, the... Uh, who is it? It's not... I was about to say Gearbox again. It's not Gearbox. I don't know why you get Gearbox and Epic mixed I, up, man, but it's, I, it's Epic. Every time. <laughs> epic, yeah. I even uh, said it during my epic. little mini introduction. Come on. I know. <laughs> but Damn it, Luke! I was monologuing. I, it was said in the monologue. But yeah, uh, it, it's an epic. Uh, he was blaming it on trolls. And yeah, no, said, like like he basically just, said well, um, verbatim. It seems that people did not want to play; just waited for a reason to pour out their bile. That is, yeah. it turns out that we, the developers for years, have been hard and painful with losses, trying to do something special. But a certain category of players believes that our work is not even worth a couple of minutes to install the launcher. Um, yeah. No, like, 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 okay, I realize it's Russian, and that's a direct translation, so it might not be perfect. That's why it sounds a little weird, but that was verbatim what he said, and it's like, that's such a tone-deaf statement to make. Yeah, it's it really is like uh, EA's uh, Battlefield 1's fumble, or Battlefield 5's fumble earlier yeah. this year, right. or last year, late last year. Um, same kind of shit. Oh, well, you're not real fans, and you're just... You don't Spoiled want children. You don't want the game. Don't buy it. You don't okay. want it. Fine. Don't buy it. It's Fine. like it's, we won't okay. even make a game on PC anymore. Cue that. Ba- like, cue that. Uh, cue that shocked Pikachu meme where they say, you know, they say something like, you "Don't like our game? Yeah. Fine. Don't buy it. Fans don't buy their game." And then it's just them with. Uh, oh, wait. What? We didn't make our pre-orders. We I'm didn't, gonna. Oh, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna make that meme now and share it. I'm sure it's been made. I've literally seen it on our gaming. I have. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> but seriously. You motherfucker, these are your consumers you're talking to. Right. You can make up your little own fucking story in your head all you want that people like me who love the Metro series uh, have played the game, bought the games both on console and on PC are I, that I'm, oh, I just don't like them. Yeah. No, motherfucker. I want your game. Yeah. However, I mean, I'm not going to go to another service. It's like if I don't like a store. Uh, and you're only selling it there, I'm not going to go there to buy your shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, someone used an example um, when discussing it on on another area. Um, That Let's say there's a sandwich that they always buy at a store, right? Like 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 the example you you were making here. They love this sandwich. The sandwich is amazing, but it's not something that's necessary to them. But every time they go by the store, they say, oh, you know, I'm going to get me a sandwich. All of a sudden, that store is now selling it at another location that's way far out of the way, it's like, you know what, never mind, I don't need that sandwich. And that kind of draws the same way here. It's like, well, that's just extra hoops for us to jump through. 
You know, yeah. Steam's been around since like what 2002, 2003. So there's a lot of gamers. You know, that's 17 years or so, and there's a lot of gamers who have built huge libraries on Steam. Yeah, my entire library is on Steam, with the ex- uh, the exception of one game I got for for free from Nvidia, uh, which was Black Flag, which launches from Steam. And um, I have like two or three games from Origin that I don't play. Yeah. yeah see, like I, I played Peggle and that's it because I got it for free. Right. And that's the same thing with me. Like I have Blizzard installer and I have GOG and GOG is just there because, you know, I can play if I want to play like an old game, I yeah. can fire it up and I know it's going to work. Uh, Blizzard's there because I, I uh, it's just another one of those things where that's the only place I can play the game. And I hate that. I really mm-hmm. do, but then again, they also have Diablo three and whatever. I uh, I had Blizzard when I played um, Overwatch, and then for some reason it it had an error. I probably just need to update it. But from then on, I was like, no, I'm never updating this. I oh, just fucking uninstalled me. it. You remind and me never, that I also have Overwatch. <laughs> I never went back to play it because nope, it fucked up and. Why would I use that for one game I barely ever play? I mean, that was the same thing for me in, like, Origin back before uh, they overhauled it in, like, I want to say 2015, 2016. Um, Back back then, you know, when I first built the computer I have now, um, which is kind of crazy for me to think about, but when I first built that computer then, Origin would freeze up and crash and one day it crashed my entire system. And I was like, and when I say crash my entire system, I mean, literally resulted in a kernel panic and I got a blue screen of death and I'm just like, what the fuck, man? So I, yeah. I got rid of origin for a while and then I had it installed like about a year and a half later. And I don't remember what I was playing on there, but I was playing something and, uh, I don't know when between there and then that I re- I uninstalled it or removed it, or maybe I just had to reinstall Windows for something. I think I might have because I've I've made so many changes to this computer since then that I don't know what I've done. Uh, but, yeah, I don't have it on here. And uh, truth is, I don't even notice it's gone. Yeah. So. But, I, uh, I, I don't want to completely – I, I want to – uh, I don't want to, but I will say I will give this guy a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that it was something, you know, said in I mean, he's he's frustrated a right? whole he, lot of time. He, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's he's, spent... he's he's been working on this product and then all of this shit, this whole shit show came out. And I'm sure there's more money possibly maybe in his pocket. Uh, it seems like um, Deep Silver's a pretty good publisher. So I'm assuming whatever deal they got from Epic is some of that money's going to the devs too that they wouldn't have gotten if they had been on every platform. Right. Um, right. Cause Epic's totally, it, it was a guaranteed profit or whatever was the term used for, uh, this deal. Guaranteed uh, stream of revenue. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, now 4A has come out and said, no, it, we're not going to not. I mean, no, no, make, it's deep silver. Deep oh silver. no, 4A came out as well. Oh, well, okay. the developer too. Because, yeah. yeah, the Deep Silver came out and said, yeah, what this guy said, um, that's that's not how it's actually going to be. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. That's not our direction and all that. It, and, like, for me, though, like, like the, the tone deafness oh, of his statement um, is, is, like, frustrating, right? Because, like, I, I, I'm in that camp of I've never played the games. Yeah. But I might buy them based on what my friends tell me. And I own Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light because, you know, you recommended them to me. I've had other people recommend them to me. And while I've never sat down and played them because I've got a backlog of games that are like, it's like 400 it's, games deep. You know, it's it like, happens. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it, now I don't want to buy the game. And now, now yeah. that it's going to be available on this platform that I have zero incentive to install, Mm. Why, why, why do I want to play it? I don't play Fortnite and that's Fortnite and Unreal Tournament are like the only things Epic has. So yeah. I don't care. I, I like Unreal Tournament. That's fine. But guess where Unreal Tournament is the version that I play. It's on Steam. So I have no reason to, I have no reason. 
Yeah. And this tone deaf statement, even with, you know, four A and uh, Deep Silver coming out and saying, Oh no, don't worry about that. It's like, I don't I don't want to now. Like I'm not yeah. I don't I don't want to buy it now because this guy is completely missing the point of why everybody's so upset over this. It's very much in the same vein of the uh when the loot box shit happens and the uh arguments against um microtransactions and it's that entitled game almost that entitled gamers argument and there's no other there's no other place in business where companies would call their consumers in oh they're just overly entitled like musicians like music companies don't do that uh, movies don't do that like there's no Nobody does that. It's and, the dumbest shit in the world. And they might talk there, shit about reviewers. Don't get me wrong. They'll talk shit about reviewers all day long when it comes to reviews and things like that. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like fucking – like, I mean, the retail workers do all the time. We'll talk shit about the customers. I talk but, shit about everyone, though. But, like, yeah, it's it's a matter of, like – Coke doesn't come out and say, oh, well, you motherfuckers go buy Pepsi. No. You're selling a fucking product. We're paying you for the product. And, you, you don't know, get to fucking decide all of this shit and fuck us over and expect no uh, repercussion. Yeah, you don't expend. It's like, let, let's also look at it from the angle of, well, if we're entitled, it's your fault we're entitled. You know, like you are the ones that keep giving more and more and, and pushing that envelope farther and farther. We're like, we just want to play video games, man. I well, they keep trying to take and take and take. Yeah, that too. And but but they're beholden to um, shareholders. shareholders. Which I get that they can't, too. They can't just make money every year. They have to make more money every year. But that's the problem. So how that, do you make that's more money? Unsustainable... Well, we start more monetization, more loot boxes, more everything. Right, but but the problem with it is it's gonna. Pardon me. It can only go so far, right? Oh like, well, yeah. You can only take you can only take those monetization schemes so far. The anyway. next thing was live services, and we've said a hundred times live services only work when you are the only one. <laughs> yeah, it's because... not going to work when there's there's multiple options. Like like, and I'm sure we've said this before. If I have the option to go and play this game and pay to play this game that I've already bought, or I can go over here and play this game, which is just as nice. And it doesn't have all the bullshit throwing ads up in my face to pay for premium in-game currency or whatever. And it doesn't yeah. bother me. And I can still get the same level of, of enjoyment out of it. I have no incentive to play that live service, you know? Exactly. And you know what? The, uh, but, but WoW the, can tell you that story. Is it eventually ends. Yeah. Uh, it, it has to WoW be. right now is fucking deserted almost. From what I hear, it's like a fucking ghost town. When there's better options or there's more options and they're all just as good, there you yeah. gotta you gotta have an incentive. And you're not giving me an incentive, so I'm not gonna care. Yeah. But you know what though? We're not their target demographic anyway. You oh know? no, for that stuff, yeah. With this metro shit, like I am literally their demographic. Like right. I said, I'm a i I'm I'm a fan of this series. Right. Um and like you said, where's the incentive for me to go and get uh, Epic's shit? There's yeah, none. There There's is none, none whatsoever. None other than I, I do want your product. However, it's like if you're only selling it in a store, uh, like you said, far away or somewhere yeah. I don't want to drive to or somewhere I, a business that I have no intention to give my money to. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Why would I know, give them my money? Why would I care? You know, yeah. like. It's unfortunate, but I'll go ahead and wait a year because by the time you release on Steam, your game will be a fucking like game of the year price and probably have any DLC with it already put into a fucking cheaper price tag. Plus, you know what? Plus all those people on the Epic Launcher and the Epic Store, however many they get, they can be all the bug testers and then we can we can exactly. we can play a yeah. more completed and less fucked up game. So you know what? Also, I forgot to... Oh, I'll bring that up later. We, we're not there yet. Um, so you know what? <laughs> Go ahead. Release your game on only one platform like that. Let all of those rubes, if there are any who buy the game, buy the game, let them yeah. suffer through all of your initial bugs. 
So. On top of the fact that I love that – I know there were some people that said boycott. But in reality, I think more of it would just be people just not choosing to not buy the game. It's not an outright – like I wouldn't even say I'm boycotting the game because I'm not. I'm going to buy the game. It's just I'm not going to buy it where you're selling it right now. Right. I, I Honestly, and, and all the people that are sitting there saying boycott the game and everybody who review bombing the game – I, 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 they're all idiots. They're not, I, I hate them. The other games. Yeah. Like I hate them because they are, they're what's wrong with the gamer culture. And I throw that up in quotes cause I hate that name too. It's, um, like, I, like, I don't, I don't agree with that though. The only things like it's been said many times before, the only thing that will make a company, um, admit wrong is usually hitting them in the wallet. That's what happened with battlefield five. Um, that's what's going to happen with this game too, is they're probably, hopefully, I mean, I, I assume they're not going to sell nearly as many copies on the Epic store as they would if they just released everywhere. Now, who knows? Maybe the Metro series is one more people play on the console. I don't think so because I remember the console lighting was good, but on PC, it was fucking amazing. Yeah, but lighting's not going to make you play a game. No, but I, that's, I that's mean, where like, now you're talking Metro, you're talking like like graphics and semantics and stuff, but then no, no, you know, but I, I mean, got a point. Metro like, was a PC game to me first. I mean, Metro was a, was absolutely intended as a PC game. Like I'm, I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and throw that out there. Like yeah, no, there was no. I I, I almost I don't want to say that it was an afterthought, um, but I think it was definitely a lower priority thing to get it poured at the consoles, um, or however they they worked it to get it working on consoles. But it was definitely a PC game from the get go. Um, yeah. And like I said, I always want to give the, those guys huge credit because of all the shit they went through to make the first two games. You know, yeah, literally um, fucking somebody on an exercise bike. Yeah, uh, hooked to up power to a generator the laptops. To, yeah, to power the game to power the fucking development. <laughs> yeah, so it's <laughs> like, just I, crazy. I always want to give them that credit, but like that that doesn't excuse you from being a shithead. Mm, yeah. So and and I don't know, man. You you got it. You got it. Like. Yeah, I understand you guys, the big companies at least, have to answer to like the shareholders and all that. But you guys have to have customers to begin with. And if yeah. the customers are saying, hey, we don't we don't like this, you should probably listen to them. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You should probably listen to the people who are giving you money for this product so that you can make the money that you're trying to make to satisfy the shareholders. Just and this a fucking is a thought. This is a really great example of when exclusivity isn't a good thing. No, like it, it's almost never a good thing. Like it's one thing if, like, like obviously I would never expect like a Super Mario game to show up on the Xbox, you know, one. Like, yeah, duh, that's that's obvious. That's an exclusive thing that's made by the console maker. Just like you would never expect Gears of War to be showing up on PS4. Right, like the, it doesn't work yeah. that way, or you wouldn't expect a God of War to show up on like the Nintendo Switch. That's just it's just dumb, because those are made by the console makers, so you're not going to get that. Or at companies that they own, right? Or Which, like yeah, they're I mean, subsidiaries. That, they're, that they're, does change over time sometimes. Of course, of course. Um, like like but, with, with Sega and Sonic, like eventually it yeah. got to a point where. Sega's like, fuck this. We're not consoles are too expensive. We're just gonna make software, and then we got Sonic games on the on the Nintendo, GameCube, and shit like that. Yeah, but this is like a whole nother level when you're talking about a fucking distributor for PC games. It's it's insane. Yeah, and like even buying a physical copy, which I don't know if they're even gonna sell, um, gives you a code that only works with Epic's storefront. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things that happened with uh, with Fallout 76. There were people who would order the game, like the physical copy, and then they'd just get a fucking like cardboard cutout that had a code on it to redeem yeah. on the Bethesda launcher or whatever to, mm -hmm. to get the game. That's happening more and more on everything. Even console games are coming like that. Because, I mean, uh, let's be honest here. It, it, guys, it, it's straight up cheaper to maintain online infrastructure versus producing physical copies. Yeah, a physical disc isn't... I, I it's mean, not necessary anymore. You have to install the game anyway on consoles. There's not really a purpose to having a physical disc. And like, like as somebody who's been playing video games for 
you know, damn near three decades. I actually do, I, and, and, and even though I'm somebody who does support digital games because I like the idea of, like, bringing my Switch with me and having 15, 20 games at my disposal, um, I, I actually, without extra crap to carry, um, yeah. I completely sympathize, though, with the people who want to collect physical copies or want to have that because, you know, it, it, it definitely gives you a sense of ownership, like real ownership over the game. Yeah. And so I completely sympathize with them. But I'm sorry. That's another sad thing is we're getting to a point where eventually you know you'll buy the product and not really own it. Yeah, you know it's been that way for a while. I and mean, when you buy on a storefront, you're you're buying the license to that game. You're buying the rights to play it and use it. You're not buying the game itself. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I completely understand you guys. I fuck, I'm I'm right there with you in a way. While I do prefer digital. I mean, the option to buy physical would be nice, and that's that's unfortunately that's a, that's a thing that's dying. It's it's a it's a thing that's drying up, and yeah. um, I mean it, it's thanks in part to uh, like I said, online infrastructure and and things like that, and bandwidth and accelerating internet technologies and all that getting better and cheaper and faster. And even though it's not still not widespread enough, I think to completely replace physical copies especially in places like australia where the internet is trash um or new zealand and areas like that it's mm -hmm. like I, I i don't know i, I don't want to see physical media die just yet it sucks for them especially when you know the game has a 1.5 gig update oh no to... no no more like a 65 gig update you know yeah. something like that and like sometimes. the day one patches the actual game and what's on the disc oh, is just God. an installer to get you started or like uh, Kingdom Hearts didn't have the fucking ending with it. Oh, God. Yeah, you had to download that separate. Mm -hmm. Or like, uh, fuck. Uh, oh, you know what? I, I've lost it. Oh, well, I had another example of that. Um, but I, it doesn't matter. It's just, like, that's, that's it. Like, what more do you... I don't know. But I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Physical media, guys. I love y'all. And I, I marvel at... The, what those of you who, who amass these massive collections, you're not going to be able to do that soon because it's all going to go away. Because box art and cases and this themselves, especially Nintendo Switch cartridges, it's like it's it's dying because it's expensive and it's wasteful. So, yeah. Well, there's that too. So, mm. um, another company that's made an oopsie. At least I consider it an oopsie. I, I think mean, they are they are the king of oopsies. <laughs> yeah. So EA had to release an infographic on the ways to play Anthem. Because once again, they've decided that, hey, we're going to sell a service on Origin Access Premiere. So instead of just buying a game outright, you can pay us 15 bucks a month forever. And then you get to play the game uh, five, six days, seven days early. Because, yeah, that's that's worth your fucking soul. Uh, it's I just fucking EA. What the fuck, man? Uh, the game Early Access is going to release on February 15th. If you have EA, EA's Origin Access premiere uh, on PC and then you can play the first 10 hours on the 15th. If you have Origin Access basic or EA Access on the Xbox One. And then finally the game comes out on uh, February 22nd, full game, for uh, pre-orders and the standard pre-order. Uh, so, so actually, uh, I don't even know if that's when the game releases completely if you didn't pre-order it. <laughs> okay, hold up. I have a few... Um, po I actually have just one point to make because you used a word that I don't think applies to EA. What's that? Um, you said fully, <laughs> the full game. Those those oh, words yeah, do not sorry. apply to EA. Uh, let's yeah. let's be honest here. They're going to yeah, release like uh, they're going to release. All right, they're going to release the full game, and I throw that in in quotes. And it's going to yeah. be like a quarter of the game, right? And it's then the like... rest of the game will come in like thirty gigabyte chunk patches in the that... coming months. <laughs> let's be honest oh my here. God. And then um, 10 hours is the entire campaign. And then after that, it's just grinding. <laughs> oh, so they're going with the Destiny the Destiny model. Where yeah, the, you get the original you, Destiny model. The original Destiny model, 
where you, you paid $60 for 10 hours worth of shooting shit in the face, and then you had to pay another $30, $40 or whatever for the expansions, which the expansions were the actual game. So Yeah. Uh, I watched... Um, the I watched some demo play uh, of the game the other day, and it yeah. seriously just looks... It, it looks like Destiny with jetpacks. <laughs> it's all it really looks like to so me. So it, it basically looks like Destiny 2, but maybe not as cool. Yeah, because I, I Destiny 2 I adds def- jetpacks from, from gameplay videos I've seen. You oh, can, did they? Okay. I, think, well, I, don't hey, know, I don't know necessarily jetpacks. gameplay, but they definitely show up in some cutscenes and shit where like the character... So I don't... I, I definitely... I'm definitely going to be skipping Anthem because I mean, I as a rule don't buy games from Electronic Arts. Um, yeah. Like, I stopped doing that. The last game that I bought from Electronic Arts, and it's not really Electronic Arts from whom I bought it, they were just a publisher, um, was Kingdoms of Amalar. And uh, I, I, I can't I can't do it. Like, I've had Origin installed since then. There are a couple games in there that I have, I have played. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 as a rule, I won't buy Electronic Arts games this because is, they pull that This is a Bioware's game. Right, but it's, um, it's, it's but EA. It's Bioware hasn't been Bioware for... A while. Um, I mean, yes. Yeah, look at Mass Effect, the last Mass Effect game. Yeah, that Mass Effect Andromeda was. I guess it's better now that they've had time to finish the game. I mean, uh, but another come one on, of those it's cases. been what two years? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, man. Like, like it's you know, fucking I, pathetic. This is why I like Nintendo's approach to video games when they're making new games. I should say not not yeah. their their reports and their remasters and their HDs and all that. Um, with what they did with Metroid Prime 4, where they were like, yeah, it's well into development, but we looked at it and where it was. We didn't like it, so we're scrapping it and starting over. And that's that Miyamoto quote where he says, you know, a, a, a bad game will be bad forever, but a delayed game will be good eventually. It's like, yeah. yeah. And, and like for me, um, I never played Mass Effect, so I never got into it. I don't have the love for it that, that you uh, and others have. And I'm never going to sit there and shit on Mass Effect as a series. Um, but Andromeda, like, dude, that game, just from the facial animations, that turned me off of the game completely. Because I don't, that, that chick, man, she is so fucking creepy. And just in the worst way, she sends shivers down my spine. I'm looking like, oh, God. That was like a Bethesda release with the amount of bugs and bullshittery in it um, without the ability to, like, fix it from yeah, a yeah. modding standpoint. Or, and without that community already behind it, uh, it was just a fucking mess. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, and that's, again, it goes with that you set a fucking stupid date and then you told a developer – Finish it by this time or it's your ass. And then you fucking pushed out an inferior product and you got shat on and you deserved it. However, EA is the kind of company that turns around and they take it out on the developer. And yeah, they close the studio. Not all of their fault. Like uh, yeah, I don't remember if they closed that studio or if they're on uh, like suspended or whatever well, wasn't now. Wasn't that but... uh, Bioware Montreal? Uh, I think so. I, I want to say exactly. that, yeah, and they've done some good work before, but they weren't. They they did like a side project. They did. They never. They had never done a full game release like what Andromeda was supposed to be. Um, yeah, they usually. I know they worked on the some of the other Mass Effects, and I believe they had worked on like, um, in, uh, the the Inquisition. What is that series? Um. Oh oh um Dragon Age Dragon Age yeah. Um, I like, I think they worked on aspects of those games and then EA went here, make this whole game. Like, well, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, why? Oh, and then here's your release date. Here's your window to get it done. Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want, uh, I, I already have a distaste for MMOs. Yeah. Uh, for sure. In general. And this game is, and these live service games our games where it's like here we're going to take all of your time and i'm like no i'm i'm good i'd rather go play a game with a story like i might dabble like we've said before now that destiny to destiny and uh by uh uh bungie are is separate from uh activision blizzard yeah i might i might give that game a shot a pick up and play type game have you know enjoy it for a little while and go off and do other things but 
these are the kind of games that, you know, oh, daily login bonuses. And it's like, I'm not fucking wanting to play a mobile game on my PC or yeah, Xbox. Yeah, no, that's or... literally what I have my mobile phone for, to play mobile exactly. games on. Like, I, I will play those kinds of games when I don't also have to pay 60 fucking dollars for the privilege of downloading them, you know, or yeah. installing them or whatever. So it's like, like those games oh are God. fine for like a few minutes of distraction, but they're not. And when those I'm... games, when those games try and get me to buy more, it's like, okay, I got you. I, 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 you, you were free and I've had some fun with you. You can advertise shit to me. Right, Fucking Anthem right. has $20 suits of arm suits of armor. No, 20 fucking dollar microtransactions or you some know, ridiculous price. You know what they're I can buy with $20? Insane. You want to know what I can buy with $20 that I can get infinitely more use out of? Um, I can buy two cactuses to shove up my ass. Exactly. Um, I can buy... <laughs> Eight like eight pounds of frozen preformed hamburgers that I can throw on my grill and enjoy. Um, I can buy the flu shot and feel sick for a week, but then not get the flu for the rest of the year. Um, I can adopt a kitty, which is infinitely more fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, like there's so many more things that I would rather do with that $20. I would rather take that $20 and burn it in my hand and suffer second degree burns on my fingertips, then give it to EA and, and Bioware for Anthem armor suits. No, come on. Really? Like, seriously? Come on, yeah. man. Like I said, I, I don't, I don't mind that nearly as much in free to play games. You got to monetize some way, somehow that's a way that you can do it because you complete, you, you release this game. It's, it's, you know, free with an asterisk. But it's like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fine purchases. with that. I expect that, you know. But when you're sitting here and you're creating this AAA title and it's $60, $80, $90, whatever for the complete game, um, and then you're going to shove this in my face, like, I get... How many more times do we have to sit here and complain and say, don't give us microtransactions we don't, we don't want that. We're not going to buy them. I know I'm not going to buy them. I'm not going to buy any game with a microtransaction like that. Yeah. And you know what? The games that I said I'd never buy because they had loot boxes and gambling in them. Guess what? I never paid for them. I got them for free mm -hmm. through various things, you know, Humble Bundle or something. I paid for a, hundred, a year of Humble Bundle. That money goes to charity. Those games get donated. Boom. That's how I got Overwatch. That's how I got Destiny. I might pick up Destiny's DLC because it's not terribly expensive and it adds a bunch of extra content and that's kind of cool. But aside from that, I'm not. I why? Yeah, it's insane. Um, like there was the recently, like fucking Call of Duty had a Red Dot site that was like five or ten bucks. Fucking ridiculous. Come on, man. Um, and I don't, I, I don't want to say it was them. If somebody with loot boxes recently came out with, um, a system where you can pay more to not, not just get the loot box, but to get a loot box with better chances of like better stuff, like the rare items, <laughs> like come the fuck on. <laughs> how is that not gambling i mean how is that not going from the 50 cent slots to the dollar slots basically yeah you're 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 giving more money for a sl for the chances of a better payout yeah it's like i dude n no <laughs> just just no i would rather take that 20 dollars and go blow it at the at the casino like seriously yeah. Because at least then I might get something for my trouble, you know? Or, mm -hmm. like I said, man, take that 20 bucks and go get a blowjob. It might not uh, be a great blowjob, and I <laughs> might contract syphilis, but that's better than getting fucked by EA. Yeah. I just fucking hate it. I hate it all. Besides, syphilis is a beautiful word. It just syphilis. rolls off the tongue. Syphilis, syphilis is a horrifying word. It makes me think of uh, fucking syphilitic insanity. 
Hey, man, that's only if you let it progress that far. Yeah. You, you get um, syphilis, you go to the doctor, you get the shot, you're fine. What's his name? Dying of it. Al Capone. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. God. Um. So something that's good that's happened lately or been happening is I've been playing the shit out of Resident Evil 2. Right. And that game is fucking fantastic. Oh, I don't know if I said it on the podcast. I know I said something in the Discord. I did buy Momodora. And Momodora, oh, yeah. Momodora is great. It is difficult and unforgiving and punishing, but it is mm-hmm. great. Um, it's got that 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 classic, uh, this is just hard. It doesn't have to be hard. And if you die, it's your fault. But it's it's really good. I, I'm I'm uh, enjoying hard it. Hard but fair. Hard but fair. Yeah, is is like it's like kind of like like I, I Dark Souls is in a weird position um, because they did a very strange thing with the original Dark Souls where your ability to do things was tied to your frame rate. So I yeah. I, I think comparing any game to Dark Souls is wrong. Dark Souls two, Dark Souls three, fine. They did those better. Um, so I'm not going to compare this game to Dark Souls because it is it's hard, but it is fair. Like, if I get hit, it's because I fucked up. And uh, there are, I, I've died, like, easily in probably 20 times, and I'm not even that far. In. I've beaten the first boss, the first two bosses that you encounter, and that's it. That's as far as I've gotten. I'm in, like, <laughs> a city now. I have no fucking idea where I'm going, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Still having fun with it. Yeah, no, it, it's like, um, it's like how, uh, Ego Raptor did his his videos on sequelitis, and there's just no anything. There's no instructions. It's just you push a button, you jump and shoot. In this case, you jump and swing. It's it's great. It didn't hold your hand. Through. Does not hold. Does not hold your hand. Yeah. You you find some NPCs. They tell you things. You fight a giant witch with big ass titties because she's giant, and yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen that clip in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, well, it, the one that I, I thought, that's a different, uh, that clip in the trailer is different from the, uh, oh, okay. from where I've, where I'm at in the game. Like I'm not to that point yet. Mm-hmm. So you fight her like slightly spoiler, you fight her probably multiple times uh, or okay. at least a creature like her. I don't know if it's necessarily the same witch, but there's giant witches with giant tits. So, and they jiggle mm-hmm. they got jiggle physics and jiggle animations. <laughs> If you are concerned at all about that, it's in the game. You're fine. It's in there if you need it. It's in there if you want to jerk it to the giant undead witch with the gi- giant jiggly tits. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I mean, how are you going to avoid it? You really can't. Like, <laughs> like you have no choice in the matter whatsoever. <laughs> it's a narrative choice. You got to fight the giant jiggly, w- jiggly tit witch. So, Yeah. But back to Resident uh, Evil 2, because I don't think we talked about that. Um, much. No, I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast, and it's it's fantastic. It is the new gold standard for remaking a game, re-releasing mm-hmm. a game. Right. Nobody gets to call their game a re-release unless they do this amount. You you can call it a HD upgrade. You can call your game. You, you just fucking release the game again. But this is a fucking. I'm sorry, not re-release. Remake. This is a remake. This game has been rebuilt from the ground up. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, it's one of those things that I can't wait to play. Like, I haven't played it yet because I didn't have. Yeah. I, I'm a broke motherfucker. I didn't have the sixty bucks <laughs> when it yeah. dropped. Um, I will be getting it this week though. But right now, it's like, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I haven't it. finished it yet because I I'm slow with playing games. I can't really. I don't marathon games well, like I used to. Right. Um, no, Jake's because you, you, you want to slow down and play. You want to enjoy. Yeah, that and there's times when the game scares the shit out of me and I'm a fucking pussy and I'm like, oh, OK, I'm done. The the amount of just uh, <laughs> the stress of constantly uh, on the edge of an oh shit moment yeah. will eventually get to me where the point where I'm like, OK, I've done enough. I'm going to go de-stress now. <laughs> I'm going to go like relax or go do something else. Watch something fucking like just watch puppies and kitties or something for a little while. Yeah, see, for me, it's the opposite direction. Like I've, I've not played the game. I've not experienced the game. I've avoided spoilers and all that as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I I can't obviously speak to the scariness of the game, but for me, it probably wouldn't be the scariness of the game. I'd get killed and say, fuck this and throw my controller across the room or slam my mouse and keyboard. Like, fuck it, I'm done. And then that's why I take so long to play games sometimes because I'm shit at the game and I die a lot. 
So I, I am the same way. Uh, also, if a game crashes on me and I lose any amount of time, I'll shelve the game for sometimes years. Right. Um, I did have one of those deaths where I was very mad at the time and I had lost something. I, it was only like 30 or 40 minutes, but it was an it, it was a key thing that I had done and I received a new weapon right. and stuff. And the idea of having to go do it again, I was like, no, fuck you. Just was done for a while. Um, but I mean, it was totally my fault. Like I, 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 there's an enemy that I, everybody, it, like, especially if you've played the old game, but by now it's gone around it because it's a meme. There's an enemy called Mr. X. Oh yeah. No, Mr. X. That's yeah. yeah let's, let's talk about Mr. X a little bit. That Kool-Aid man motherfucker will follow you around and it is stressful as all fucking hell because unlike people that played the old game, uh, I don't know any of the tricks to kind of like put him away from you. Right. So for me, it was just fucking running as fast as possible, room to room, um, getting far enough away that he kind of loses track of you and then quietly walking everywhere, like speed walking, trying to get to my destination, hoping I don't run into him again. Right, right. Because <laughs> he wanders and you seriously will... It's fucking horrifying to constantly hear among the moaning and the other noises that you hear from zombies around you. You can hear the thumping of his footsteps and like doors opening and slamming as this motherfucker's looking for you around the police station. It is horrifying. I've stood in a room just sitting there going, oh, my God, I think he's outside. I think he's right over in the next room because it, it's really good about noise uh, or about um, audio quality. So you can hear him if he's in a room over and he will get louder and louder and you'll hear him walk down the hallways and shit. It is Capcom is fucking number one with this sort of horror in my opinion i don't play a lot of horror games period so i mean there's a lot of those games where you don't get a fucking weapon which i refuse to play because fuck that yeah um yeah, no i'm good capcom resident evil 7 was amazing and with this both games are like holy fuck that's that's terrifying i gotta hide but there's not really dedicated hiding so you can't like run into a room real quick and climb into a locker. Yeah, it's not like, or something. what is that? Um, the Aliens game where you have to hide from the Xenomorph. It's, it's not yeah, like Alien. I, I that game I'm terrified to play. Right. But it's not like the Outcast series where you can hide in the locker and the thing doesn't look in the closet because reasons. Yeah. Um, in this, like it's he's legitimately terrifying. And he did something that scared me, like fucking surprised me so goddamn bad that i went sprinting down a hallway <coughs> trying to get to my objective just to get away from him right and ran into this area i forgot was fucking full of zombies and in my just terror of he's behind me i slowed down because of the zombies and then he's fucking donkey punching me in the back of the head and these zombies are biting me i forget that at this time i was actually fucking loaded with shotgun ammo which <laughs> that that means i had like 10 rounds but that's more than i've ever had that's that's something else man so like, i'm like oh my god oh what do i and then i just get fucking eaten and killed and i'm like well fuck god damn it and i pissed and i don't play it for like a day and then i talk to jake about the game and and I'm like, okay, I got to play the game again. <laughs> I got to get back into this. I got to get back. It, it's so good. Like I said, Jake's beaten it. He's beaten it with Claire. He uh, thinks Claire. Yeah. Jake? I mean, he's yeah, very, it's Claire. Claire. Yeah. He, Whatever. He, he just wants to look Claire. at Claire's butt. Well, yeah. And Jake will probably beat this game and then find every secret and then beat it again and then make this game his bitch because that's the way Jake plays games. Yep. He went, he fucking marathon. Like yesterday he's texting me and I was about to tell him, Hey, stop playing so much. You're about to beat Leon's campaign. And I haven't even beaten it the first time. Right. And then I get a text later at night and he's like, oh, I finished Leon. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't even finished the game one time yet, but I mean, it's just it's it's that so fucking, fucking Jake guy. Yeah. All right, guys, it's we're gonna go Evil ahead and wind it down. Today. We we talked about Resident Evil, but let's not go yeah. any farther. Yeah. You know? We ended. Let's end it on a happy note. Yeah. <laughs> no more fucking politics. Or Fuck you, Jake. Soapboxing. <laughs> that's our. That's our. <laughs> that's our happy note. Fuck you, Jake. Fuck you, Jake. Beat the game before me twice. Fuck. I fucking God dare you. Punch you in your dick the next time I see you. I'm not gonna lie. I hurried 
to beat God of War after he picked the game up because in like two days he was like a quarter or, uh, or almost halfway through the game. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to finish this game real quick. <laughs> yeah, he'll spoil things. He'll walk up and he doesn't do it on purpose. He's just a dumb. No, he hasn't. A- he hasn't spoiled. He's he's OK about not spoiling stuff unless he gets really excited. All right. Uh, but just the idea of him fucking beating it that quickly i'm like no i i must be good at video i must i do good I must, video games. i must be game i do yeah. good game i play I Ugh, that caveman <laughs> it's that caveman there's no reason for it but like no, I'm, i fucking played this game before you i need to be i'm beat for you Fuck yeah you. yeah <laughs> all right guys so we hope you guys enjoyed our our yep. ramblings and rants and ravings um you know and my squeaky chair and Luke's squeaky chair and you, me vaping. Uh, there's a few, yeah. It sounds like it sounds like a ventilator. Every yeah, like I try to like I try to like I try to like lean back and I monitor my audio level to make sure that it doesn't get too loud. It's like I I don't know, man. And like I don't know if you realize, like fifty five, sixty minutes in, I just gave up. Like fuck it, man. Oh, and I, every every time we record, I'm like, it's like, oh, he hasn't hit the vape in a while. And then I just hear that, like, God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, Joe. You motherfucker. So, yeah. Um, so if you guys like us, you know, you want to help us continue doing what we're doing or maybe expand the kind of content we produce because we'd like to get a little farther along. Uh, you can always give to, uh, money to us on Patreon. We give you perks and stuff, you know early access to content if you give enough money there's a tier on there where if you give it to us we'll make a video about you every month and make fun of you in it so you know you like to us to tear into you like we tear into some of the companies that's your that's your option for you right there um <laughs> so you can find all the information on ungodlygeeks.com on our youtube channel and, and all that uh yep. so you know for the ungodly geeks i was joe i was luke you guys have a good day see it fuck you look